My name is Brian Wiles, and in this video, I'm gonna show you the best way to learn English on your own. Together, we're gonna to create a daily learning routine that covers all the major elements of learning English. Vocabulary, pronunciation, grammar, listening, speaking, and reading and writing skills. I'll show you the best resources for building each of these skills based on your current level of English, and then we'll create a learning plan that meets your goals and needs as a student. Let's get started. Right now, you probably understand at least some English. Maybe you studied it in school, or you've watched American movies, or you're currently learning as an adult, and that's fantastic. But in order to find the resources that will serve you best, it's helpful to have a clear understanding of your current level of English. And to do that, you can take this free English proficiency test, and I'll put links to everything I'm talking about in the video description box below. After you take the test, your results will be based on the CEFR scale, and you'll receive a score somewhere between A1 beginner level, and C2, which is close to a native level of fluency. Keep your score in mind throughout this video, because I'll be recommending different materials based on your current level of English. Before you dive into watching TV shows and listening to podcasts, it's important that you have a core understanding of how the English language works. How to conjugate a verb, how to build a sentence, how to ask a question, things like that. And to build that understanding, you should use one of these two courses. They're both excellent and they're completely free. And they'll give you all the knowledge you need to continue learning on your own. The only question for you is whether you want to study American English or British English. And I'll talk more about that decision in our next segment on pronunciation. If your English is already at a B2 level or above, you don't need to be using a course at all. At that level, you'll learn faster by focusing on your listening, reading, and speaking skills. And again, we'll talk about building the right routine for your needs at the end of this video. As you probably know, there are many different dialects of English. American, British, Australian, etc. And every dialect has a different pronunciation. I parked my car across the street. I parked my car across the street. I parked my car across the street. The good news is that no matter what English dialect you learn, it's pretty easy to understand the others. 99% of the vocabulary will be the same. The bad news is that all English dialects have some pretty bizarre spellings and pronunciations. So you should study the dialect that you find most interesting or useful. For many people, that's American English. And the YouTube channel Rachel's English has a free course that I highly recommend for anyone who wants to improve their American English pronunciation. As you'll see, Rachel gives clear and concise explanations on how to create every sound in the English language. Your job is to watch those guides, listen carefully, and then record yourself pronouncing the various sounds. Then ask yourself, how did I do? If there's room for improvement, go back to the guides, make an adjustment, and try again. Once you have a solid understanding of basic English pronunciation, you can start practicing a more advanced technique, vocal placement. Vocal placement refers to the way muscles in our mouths actually shape sound, and it's an important part of English pronunciation. You can use this playlist as a starting point, but eventually you'll begin to hear English vocal placement on your own. When that happens, you can practice by listening to news broadcasts and again, recording yourself and trying to match what you hear. If you're interested in learning British pronunciation, I recommend using this playlist to study basic technique and this one to master vocal placement. And again, you'll find all the information in the description box below. If you're struggling with English pronunciation, you can also use the app Elsa Speak to get personalized feedback. Elsa Speak has hundreds of lessons that cover every sound and topic related to English pronunciation, and it uses AI to analyze your speech patterns and make recommendations on how to improve. If you're a beginner, you can follow Elsa Speak's course program, which will teach you proper pronunciation from the very beginning. You can then practice what you've learned by making short conversations with the app's AI. What could be bigger than an engagement? What could be bigger than an engagement? Throughout the process, you'll be getting specific advice on how to improve your English, which is key, because depending on your native language, different sounds in English might be particularly challenging for you. Whatever the case, if your ultimate goal is to live or work in an English-speaking country, using Elsa Speak will help your English sound clearer and more professional. To learn more, use the link below to start your 7-day free trial on Elsa Speak. And if you use the code WILES30, you'll get 30% off an unlimited membership. 
If you want to speak fluent English, it's essential that you build a wide vocabulary of words and phrases. And the simplest way to do that is by using flashcards. There are thousands of flashcard tools out there, but I recommend that you use a program called Anki. It's completely free on a PC or Mac, and you can use the browser version for free on your phone. Anki isn't particularly pretty, but it uses something called spaced repetition, which will let you learn as many new words as possible in the shortest amount of time. All you need to do is open up the app and practice every day. If you're currently at the A1 or A2 level, you should practice with this Anki deck. As you can see, each card includes a native audio, so you can also practice proper pronunciation as you memorize new words. Once you reach an intermediate level of English, B1 and above, you can move on to this Anki deck, which includes more specific and conversational language. At the advanced level, C1 and C2, it's a good idea to start creating your own flashcards based on new words that you hear and see in English language media podcasts, books, TV shows, things like that. I'll share my top recommendations for each of those categories in just a moment, but first, let's talk about how to master one of the trickiest aspects of the English language, grammar. English grammar is challenging and sometimes quite strange, but with the right kind of practice, I promise that it will start to feel natural over time. And I wanna be clear that studying grammar rules does not need to be a part of your language learning routine. If you consistently use the other resources that I talk about in this video, you'll automatically build an understanding of English grammar. But I know that it can be frustrating when a phrase or a sentence just doesn't make sense. So with that in mind, here are my recommendations for learning about English grammar. For beginners, you should rely on one of the courses that I mentioned earlier. They give clear explanations about English grammar in over a dozen languages. For intermediate students, I recommend this free course from Shaw English Online. The host, Esther, covers every major topic in English grammar, and each video includes subtitles in around 10 languages. And for advanced students who want to build an in-depth understanding of English grammar, you can explore this Khan Academy course, which goes into significant detail. It is, however, only available in English. Finally, for students of any level who want to learn more about English grammar via a book, the Infographic Guide to Grammar is by far my favorite. It uses pictures and graphics to explain English grammar, which makes the concepts far more interesting and easy to understand. Listening is arguably the most important skill for any English learner because it's the key to understanding how English is used in the real world. And if you can understand spoken English, it will be much easier for you to read, write, and speak English. Personally, I think that using podcasts is the best way to practice listening in a new language for reasons that I talk about in this video. So let's talk about the best podcasts for building your listening skills in English. If you're somewhere between the A1 and B1 level, you should use one of these podcasts podcasts based on the English dialect that you want to study, American or British. At this level, there aren't many high-quality podcasts to choose from, and these two are far and away the best. Once you reach an intermediate level of English, however, you have hundreds of options. So let's start with American English. Starting at the B1 level, I recommend using the American English podcast. The host speaks slowly and clearly, and this podcast covers all kinds of useful topics for English learners common expressions, slang words, cultural notes, etc. At the B2 level, you can try The Past and the Curious. This is actually a podcast for older kids, but the content is interesting and it's very well produced. At the C level, your choices are almost endless, but I would recommend starting with The Moth Story Hour or Radio Lab, both of which will help you develop a native level of English and a deeper understanding of American culture. Likewise, for British English, you can listen to these podcasts based on your current level. Now, no matter what your level or which dialect you're learning, you want to make sure that you're using podcasts effectively. That means when you hear a word or a phrase you don't understand, use Google Translate to get a definition in your native language. And then, later on, you can review any new words by looking through your translation history. And as I mentioned earlier, making your own flashcards in Anki is always a good idea. Now, maybe you're wondering, can watching movies and TV in English be part of my learning routine? Absolutely. Although I wouldn't recommend relying on TV or movies to boost your English until you reach a relatively advanced level, B2 or above. The key, however, is that while you're watching, you should only use English subtitles, not subtitles in your native language. With that in mind, feel free to find shows or movies you like and make watching them a part of your daily routine. Just remember to look up new words and phrases whenever you hear them. What's the best way to improve your English speaking skills? 
practice. Unfortunately, there are no shortcuts. But let's talk about a few different methods that you can use every day to become a fluent English speaker. Method one, ChatGPT. It's now possible to have complete voice chats with ChatGPT, and they're easy to set up. Simply open up the app, click on this headphone icon, and start making conversation. You can have an everyday conversation or ask the system to correct your mistakes. In fact, you can use this feature to practice any number of languages, but it's a great way to start building your confidence with spoken English. Method number two, self-talk. You can also improve your speaking skills by narrating your thoughts out loud. For example, um, right now I am filming a video about how to learn English, and when I'm done, I am gonna go have lunch. It doesn't need to be complicated. You just want experience putting sentences together out loud. And this method will also develop your ability to think in English instead of translating in your head. It's very useful for learners at every level. Method number three, chatting with online conversation partners. Ultimately, the best way to practice speaking English is by talking with other people, and it's easy to find conversation partners online. And finally, method number four, immersion. If you have the opportunity to speak English with someone in the real world, go for it, whatever your level. As I've talked about in other videos, one of the biggest obstacles to learning a new language is overcoming your fear of saying the wrong thing. But the truth is, if you're waiting until you can speak perfect English before you start talking to strangers, well, that day may never come. So embrace your discomfort and go for it. Learning to read English is a hugely valuable life skill, especially if you plan to work or study in an English-speaking country. And once you reach an advanced level of English, reading can help you develop a native-level understanding of the language. Luckily, there are several websites that offer free reading material in English for students at various levels. Beginners and intermediate learners should check out freekidsbooks.org. Once you're on the site, you can search by age or English level and find free ebooks to download onto your phone or laptop. Advanced learners can also look into Project Gutenberg. This is a massive online database of free English ebooks, including classic literature from writers like Shakespeare and Mark Twain. These books aren't easy, but they're unbelievably rich. And if your ultimate goal is to speak English not just fluently, but in fact eloquently, reading this kind of material is essential. As with reading, learning to write effectively in English is extremely important for both students and professionals. And AI has made it very easy for anyone around the world to practice and improve their writing anytime. Simply open up ChatGPT, start typing, and when you're ready, ask the software to correct any mistakes or improve your overall style. You can also ask ChatGPT to give you writing prompts on a specific topic, say, personal health, to refine your understanding in a given area. Beyond that, it's really up to you. Just keep writing and asking the system for feedback. With time and consistent practice, you'll get a little better every day. Now let's talk about how to use the resources in this video to build a daily learning routine that focuses on the skills you want to develop. First of all, set aside a fixed amount of time every day for learning English. Ideally, it should be at least one hour, but you can adjust the timing to suit your needs. If you're a total beginner, you'll want to spend most of your time developing your core understanding of English by using one of the free courses that I mentioned. In addition, you should be working on your English pronunciation and growing your vocabulary with flashcards. Once you reach the A2 level, you should also start to develop your listening skills by using one of the beginner level podcasts that I mentioned. At the intermediate level, you can start to follow your own instincts about what's working best. If you like, you can continue to follow your course, or you can make listening the main engine for your ongoing learning. You'll also want to keep building your vocabulary, and you should start to develop your speaking skills via the various methods that we discussed earlier. If you're interested in using English for work or at school, this is also a good time to start developing your reading and writing skills. As an advanced learner, your daily learning routine should follow your needs and interests. Courses are not effective at this level, so you should use both listening and reading resources to make consistent progress. In addition, you should be speaking English every day and seeking out opportunities to make conversation as much as possible. As an advanced learner, it's also a good idea to work on your English writing skills no matter what your goals. Writing will help you see your weaknesses when it comes to English proficiency, which you can then address by making them a part of your daily routine. And of course, all of this can be adjusted based on your interests and goals. Ultimately, the most important thing is that you just keep learning. So do what works for you and keep going. With time and practice, you can absolutely become a fluent English speaker. Thanks for watching, and I hope this video was useful. If you have any questions, please let me know. Bye-bye.